everyone, welcome back. Good to see you again. I'm Tim Galbraith. This is Hashtag Flint. We work in cooperation with All Points TV, and we are joined today by uh, someone I've reached out to recently, um, and I've been looking forward to speaking with for uh, a couple of weeks now. He is uh, Michigan House of Representatives Phil Phelps out of the 49th District, I believe. Is yep, that correct? Yep, 49th. Well, I want to thank you for joining us here today. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. It's been a been an exciting time, as we both know, in Flint. And um, I brought you in specifically because I was interested in a piece of legislation that uh, you, I think, are in the process of proposing. I learned subsequently that you introduced the legislation that... Um, uh, was in conjunction or allowed for the $28 million that right. we've been hearing about right, uh, right. get allocated to Flint. But before we delve into those topics, I'd like to know just a little bit more about you so people who aren't familiar with you uh, okay. can have some understanding of uh, who represent, represents them. Right. Well, um, so I represent the 49th District, which is, um, it's all of it is within Genesee County, but I have the uh, communities of Swartz Creek, Flushing, um, Mount Morris City and Township, all of Flint Township, and then I also have 12 precincts inside the city of Flint. So it's a, a district that came, uh, I was elected in a special election in 2013 when Jim Ananick won the state Senate seat that was vacant, and then it caused a election to fill his seat, which was now vacant, and I was the winner in that election and was sworn in in November of 2013. Excellent. Um, I am not sure how many precincts are in Flint. You say you have 12 of them, but mm -hmm. how many are There's 61. Okay, 61 so you of them. represent about 20% of the city then as far as... Roughly, yeah. Okay. Yep. okay, very cool. Um, what made you get into this uh, whole business. I understood you were probably here before, back in the day when you were working for, um, I'm sorry, the Lieutenant Governor? Yeah, was it? so um, I uh, used to work for Lieutenant Governor John Cherry and okay. Governor Granholm. Um, okay. I was a uh, part of their administration. Um, I've worked in politics, well, I mean, if you count volunteering, um, since I was, uh, you know, just became a teenager, I had started working on campaigns that my dad was just volunteering for, and I would go out and volunteer with him uh, back in 92. Oh, wow. So I've always had an interest in politics, mostly, you know, my dad just talking about politics got me interested, but um, I originally didn't think that I was going to have a profession in, in the political field. I went to school at U of M Flint, I went to Mott and U of M Flint, oh, okay. but I was going to be a biology teacher, but then one thing led to another, and then I became the uh, president of the U of M Flint College Democrats, and I ended up just participating so much that I ended up switching my major to political science, and here I am today. Okay, so that you have an actual political science degree. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask you about that. I saw that you had been to U of M Flint. Um, 1992, you got involved in campaigning. I saw your age. We're actually only separated by a month, but that means you were about 13 years old when you started to get yeah. politically active. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and it was the the basic volunteer stuff. I mean, it was putting out yard signs and, uh, you know, handing out lit at doors, but it was just interesting to me even at that age. And my dad was a, a member of the UAW Local 659, so the politics there always gravitate towards the Democratic side. And I just really started to believe in the ideals that the Democratic Party represented. And it just it led me to where I'm at today. So, Could you expound a little bit on the ideals, part if even a couple of them particularly that okay. resonate with you? Yeah, so um, it's to me, when I think about what do the Democrats stand for? And to me, what I think of uh, that the Democrats stand for is the little guy and making sure things are fair, the economy is fair, the, the system is fair for the average everyday working Joe. And that the idea that nobody should be left behind too far in the economy and, and, and basic 
you know, for basic services and needs. So uh, one of the, when I actually decided that I was going to run for office someday, I didn't know when and I didn't know what seat, but I was probably 16 or 17 years old. I had had my driver's license for just a, a little while. And my friend's mom, uh, I, w- I stopped over at my friend's house and to pick him up and who knows to go do what but his mom asked us if we could do her a favor and she asked me if we could run down to the to the pharmacy which i actually lived most of my life as a, a younger uh child and adult in the millington area and we had just one small pharmacy in the town and she asked us if we could go up there and the pharmacist was going to give her some of her medicine and I said, yeah, absolutely, anything for you. And she was like a mom to me. And she gave me $6 and she said, he's gonna give me, he's gonna give you two of the pills that I need. And to me, I, I was like two. And I, so I asked her, which I probably even shouldn't have butted in and asked this question. And I was like, well, how many of them do you take a day? And she was like, two. And it blew my mind that here was somebody that I thought the world of, somebody that was the best mother that you could ever have. But because of poverty and the way the system was set up, she was buying her medicine one day at a time. And she was trying to get disability at the time. And she ended up eventually getting it, but it took years. But this was somebody who couldn't even turn her neck. I mean, she if she needed to move, she had to turn her whole body and she was constantly in pain. And it it blew my mind. And at the roughly around the same time, um, there was a strike threat that the UAW went. I think it was probably the last time they went on strike. It was in the 90s sometime. And I went back to my girlfriend's house that night and I just kept talking about it. And her and her mom said, well, you should be a politician someday. And I wrote my first political platform that day and I was just a teenager. And I didn't have a date picked out or an office, but I said, someday I'm going to run. So... Those stories are, are cool when you hear something that a, a person's carried with them for 20 years and it still motivates somebody uh, to do the work that they do. It's I appreciate that, so thank you for sharing yeah, that. Thank you. Um, without going too far off topic, it does make me wonder if uh, with the presidential election going on, I would assume for you the choice comes down to Bernie or Hillary, and, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that, but also maybe like the... Democratic and I guess they don't necessarily have to be Democratic uh, party leaders, but just the people that you have looked up to over the years that maybe have kind of guided you, the individuals that helped mold you, maybe not directly, but just as you watch them from afar um, conduct their business. Whose kind of influence might we feel, feel in the work that Bill Phelps is doing today? Well, I, w- I would say leaders that have really influenced me uh, in the work that I do today are not national well one of them was but it's really the people that i've worked with because you learn so much in politics based on watching other people and their mannerisms and how they confront even a meeting a one-on-one meeting or you know larger meetings with a group but how they act how they ask questions what questions they ask and how they go about um getting what they think they need in policy. And I I did my internship with Congressman Dale Kildee. And I worked for Lieutenant Governor John Cherry and Governor Granholm, two different uh, governing or political styles, I guess you should say. I worked for Rick Hamill, Pam Ferris. There's multiple people. But Pam Ferris is now your like colleague. Uh, colleague, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I okay. actually, I, I, um, I ran her campaign and then was her chief of staff for only about three months until it was evident that this election was going to happen. And and there's a rule at the state where you can't work for the state and be on the ballot for office at the same time. So I actually had to resign, completely resign. Take a leap to, of faith there. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, but I, I had been active enough and I had ran so many state house campaigns before that I knew what I had to do to get myself in front of the people and show them who I was so they would vote for me.